the worst Indian, the worst enemy that an Indian can have is another Indian. Think about that. The same with black people. The worst enemy that black people have had has been another, another black, black person. The bourgeoisie Oreo cookies. On your radio show, you um, it was interesting uh, last week uh, about the Cherokee and the Freeman. The Cherokee Freeman. When Andrew Jackson decided that he wanted that land in the southeastern part of the United States for white people, there had already been peaceful treaties and peaceful coexistence between Indians and whites. But when he saw that there was a way to make money, a profit, he decided that he was going to round up all of the six they call civilized tribes like no other tribes were civilized and moved them out west on what became known as the Trail of Tears. He rounded them up and put them in the stockades. And thousands of these people died even before he decided in the coldest winter to make them walk from the south to Oklahoma, from Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama to Oklahoma. The United States States government told him, don't bother those people. And his answer was, to them was, I got the army, try and stop me. So he carried out this, this, this march. Before there was a trail, before there was a trail of tears, and before there was a Cherokee nation of Oklahoma, there was a Cherokee nation here on the East Coast. From the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean to the northern border of Florida and the southern border of New York, all of that was Cherokee land. And in the travels of the African people here as free people before slavery, and in the travels of the African people here as free people before slavery. Check in time. Actually, Mr. Nightwolf, they were aboriginals, not Africans, as in Bonham Park, Mexico, you can see who the aboriginals are. Apologies for the interruption. Please continue. Our blood mixed. And when the Trail of Tears got underway, Some of these same people that were of mixed blood heritage, who had been married to Cherokees and Cherokees married them, were also put on that trail. But because of that mixture of blood, they were a little more resilient than the Cherokees, the Choctaws, the Chickasaws, and all of those other people from those six tribes. We would carry the bags of these people. We would carry the bags of these people. So hold up, if you were carrying the bags of these people, wouldn't that be a sign of respect as if they are the leaders, the people that you look up to? At night, they would hunt for food. They would cook food for the survival of the tribes of people on the trail. They tell these lies about, well, no, they were slaves. Well, if they were slaves, it wasn't the same kind of a slave that the white man had. We actually served as protection for a lot of black people. And when the white man come to us and say, you know, I think that's my slave over there. No, I don't think so. He's part of us. We will protect him. And they use this thing about, oh, Cherokees had slaves. Black folks had slaves too. Y'all don't talk about that. Those free black people that were here in America before the institution of slavery. You don't talk about that. 
Mr. Nightwolf is absolutely correct. Prime example, this man, Anthony Johnson, one of the first people in colonial Virginia to actually own a slave. And there is a court document on the side of his picture of the decision that was made back in eight, uh, 1655. All right, continue. So over the years, that relationship, that family stayed intact until lately in the 1900s, you get these Indians that are native and white. They bear the same mindset of the same white man that we've been talking about, of wanting to control everything and everybody. And then of course, after the American Indian Movement and the uh, onset of casinos, let me tell you Detroit the story behind that. The Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma have a very well-ran, lucrative casino. And members of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, members of the tribe, get a monthly allotment check. And then when they elected this fool, Chad Smith, who is white and Cherokee, as chief and also a lawyer and a businessman, only because of his personal dislike of dark people. He started using lies like, well, if we, uh, if we kick these freedmen out of the tribe, then y'all's checks will be a little more each month. And that's the issue. It wasn't about a person's color, it was about money. And if you follow the money trail, you, if you follow any history of any people, that when it comes to money, the greed begins to set in. So they voted the freedmen out of the tribe. People that have been in the tribe for centuries, they got bloodlines in the tribe for centuries. But it backfired on them. Because when I went to Oklahoma 15 years ago, I went there for the Red Earth Powwow. And I took um, some of my staff with me. Some of the women were with me because we were invited to come there. We were met by the organizers of the Pow Wow immediately. They gave all of the women with me these dance shows. Just like in Islam, women must cover their heads. Women don't go into a dance arena without a shawl. And then they escorted us into the circle of honor. And they spoke of me, the only voice in Washington, D.C., that speaks for Native America and tells the truth. And I'm, I got that honor, and I, I really, really, I'm honored that they would do that for me. Later on that day, I met Marilyn Van, the president of the Cherokee Freedmen's Association. We sit down. And she told me about the fight, the fight, the racism that was involved with members of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and how they were just fighting to get back and get their, their tribal membership back, thus the benefits. And it's been a fight for 15 years now. But just recently in August, there was a decision handed down by the circuit court here in Washington, D.C. And Judge Hogan told him, you have to reinstate these people into the tribe with all the rights and benefits. Fifteen years of being kicked out of a tribe that you belong to for hundreds of years by some white Indian that decides that you're not good enough. Only because of the color of your skin and only because of economics, more money. Shame on you, Chad Smith. 
when I had you on my show about 10 years ago to talk about this whole Cherokee Freeman issue. I know you remember, I hope you see this. It was Chief Tex Hall and I can't think of his name. But anyway, these two men asked you a question. The doctor said to you, Chad, if you shake your family tree, you'll be surprised at who jumps out. That was Dr. Jack D. Forbes. Professor Emeritus, the University of California, Davis, the same man, he was a Native American from the East Coast that wrote the proposal to start the very first Native American University, DQ University. And you blew him off. Chief Tex Hall, at the time who was the, the president of the three affiliated tribes of North Dakota, the Mandan, Hadasta, and Arikara, and also the past president of the National Congress of American Indians, Ask you a question, you couldn't answer. He said, how do you get rid of your people when these people have been a part of your tribal governments and systems, your tribe, for hundreds of years? How do you get rid of your people? And you hung up the phone. You knew then, you knew before then that what you was doing was wrong. But guess what? God's got an answer for everything. The Cherokee freedmen are now uh, members of the tribe with full membership. And you are no longer the chief. And I made you a promise back then that when you ran for chief again, I would see to it that you don't get elected again because I contacted a lot of your members that are not living in Oklahoma and they voted you out. It's not me, Jay Winter Nightwolf. I'm only doing what God told me to do. And I know some other things about you too. You don't want me to put them out there in the public. So you're a lawyer? Going back being a white lawyer, because that's where you belong. You certainly don't belong with us. With us. That's the end of my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm honored that you would even think about asking me to do this. And I appreciate who you are for allowing the truth to be told. Yes, sir. On the camera. God bless. I also want to thank Mr. J. Winter Nightwolf for being an honorable and an honest man that sticks up for the truth. You know, everybody needs to learn what's happening right now. So until the next time, everybody be easy.